and operated Lynn Ladder has been dedicated to providing high quality products and services to the New England area since 1946. With six locations, from their manufacturing plant in New Hampshire to their rental yard in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Lynn Ladder is the one-stop shop for all your new equipment and rental needs. Lynn Ladder has catered to contractors and homeowners for the past 72 years, no matter what size the job may be. Have a project, big or small? Then call the Ladder King today at 1-800-225-2510. Now let I love Monday! June 30th, 2019 is the last day of live racing at Suffolk Downs Racetrack, horse racetrack. I love that horn. Makes me stand on edge, I wanna bet. Well anyways, I've been coming to this place since I was a little kid, with my father, my uncles, my brothers, my friends. The place is a staple. Monday. Here I am this morning with Jessica Paquette, the Vice President of Marketing, at Suffolk Downs. As well as the track handicapper, the racing analyst, kind of a jest of all trades here. And what do you think about Mondays? <laughs> I don't think much of them, but yeah. I like them now. You like them now? Because I don't work anymore. So what's going on? So you've been security how many years? Oh, only about five years, and I only work when they race live. Really, and you get the program in your hand. So do you yep. bet when you work? No, no, I don't bet at all. You don't bet at all, you're not a gambler? No. Just a drinker and a druggie? That's all. That's it, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a question that I've been hearing about. I don't know if this is true, but I heard the track is, this whole place is closing down. This place is not closing down. Tomorrow, Monday, we are closed. Which we is are, the best day of the week, We are typically, way. your day, we are, we are resting on Monday. Uh, Monday and Tuesdays, we're typically dark, but we are open for simulcasting Wednesday, business as normal. Simulcasting resumes, we're kind of pursuing sports betting, we're looking to bring racing somewhere else. Like, chapter, there's still a few chapters left to go, so stay tuned and pay attention. I mean, you bummed out? I'm a little bummed out, but you know, happy that it happened. You know, not sad that it's gone. But Why are you happy? Well, because it's been such a great place for a lot of people. Uh, it's too right. bad they couldn't keep the racing going. Too bad they couldn't keep the casino here. And uh, yeah, a lot of good memories here. Cigar back in the '80s. Right. What right. a horse he was. How much money do you think you lost there altogether in your life? No, I, I pick winners. You're a winner, huh? Yes. And you came every Saturday for years. For years. So, so, you're, so you're ahead of the game. Yeah, I mean, if all these people showed up, you know, back the then, the place would go up. Be here. That's true. That's you know? true. So how long <laughs> did you grow up loving horses? Yeah, I was a little kid. It just never grew out of the I want a pony phase. And uh, then my mom brought me to the racetrack, and it was all, it was all downhill from there. And how long have you been here? I've been here for about 14 years. But I was the kid in high school. Like the second I got my license, I used to skip school and come here. Really? Yeah. And I had so many friends. Really? <laughs> Did people come with you? Uh, no, no, no one would ever come with me. It was just me. You always been in the horse game? So since I was born, my father's had horses. I used to dip out of school with doctor's notes. I used to go to the track. So this this is a sentimental day. That seems like a common thing. I was just talking to a girl over there, and she should skip, skip school and come down here. <laughs> it's part of us. It's part of us. Yeah, we're losing part of us today, but we're going to make the best of it. So you feeling sad about this, though? Yeah, it's nostalgic? bittersweet. It's bittersweet. I mean, we got lucky yesterday. We hope we get lucky again today. Monday. He's here gambling because he's a bit of a degenerate, I think. I'm, I'm a horse racing degenerate. Really? This is a very uh, somber moment for me. I've been coming here since probably four years old when my father used to say, I'm going to take Darren on a Saturday. He wants to go see the horses. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wants to go you see weren't the going horses. to the zoo, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I've been coming here since, yeah, my father's a Revere guy, so it's a sad day. You know? How much money have you lost here? Let's be honest. I just got here, so I'm only down no, about... No, I'm saying in your life. Oh, in your life. Oh, God. I, I couldn't even put a price on that. Yeah. I'm over 10 grand easy. Oh, uh, Just yeah. so you know. Yeah. I'm over 10. I, I've hit some good ones here. Some some, some tax that could see you later. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? What do you do? Are you a trainer? I'm a trainer from uh, Maryland, Laurel Base. Really? Yes, sir. Yeah, you bummed out that this place is closing down? It, it's sad to see it go. You know, like I said, it's my third year here. Right. Uh, I really enjoyed the race and the atmosphere. I mean, a beautiful, beautiful racetrack. It's really um, nice. You know, it's uh, hopefully we can do something with uh, Barrington, I think is what they're saying. That's um, in Western Mass? Western Mass, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, hopefully there's some hope there, to, you know, especially for the hometown guys here. Right. Um, you know, but I have enjoyed my time here for three years. You know, you're a tough cookie, I can tell. <laughs> I talked to you on the phone. I've been called worse at the racetrack. You know, and I've talked to you on the phone. You kind of bit my head up, but it was I good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I really broke you in from the start. But listen, it made me love you. Uh, likewise, <laughs> likewise. You took it really well. <laughs> well, listen, you do a great job here, and thank you for letting us in today. Awesome. And good luck today. And I, I want you to pick some winners. Thank you.
Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Welcome back to the I Love Monday show. We were not here last week, and it feels good to be back. It does. How you doing, Donnie? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be back here as usual. How was your fourth? My fourth was fantastic. What'd you do? I uh, went to my brother's uh, party. My brother threw a party at his boat. And uh, I went there and I gallivanted around the yacht club. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hoi ploys? Uh, well, it's, it was, it's in Rivera, so I mean, you know, it's... Oh, that yacht club over there by the Any bridge? Any yeah, exactly. or Gingers? I heard about that place. Uh, you heard about it? You, uh, yeah. I heard about it, drove by it 5,000 times I in your life? I heard some weird things about it. Kluski, what'd, what'd you do? Actually, that's an interesting third to add to your, uh, your mix there is Mrs. Howell. I th- oh. Earlier, we were, we were trying to decide if we wanted to bang Mona... Uh, Blanche from the Golden Girls. Yeah, and I think that it should be Blanche Devereaux in a landslide, but that's a fair one to add to the mix. She's got money. Yeah. What, Mrs. Howell? Yes. Yeah. Even if there was a prenup, she's still walking with a fair amount of money. We have some news about that. Apparently, prenups don't mean shit anymore, so... <laughs> How was your fourth, Klusk? It was all right. It was the one right before the fifth. You seem <laughs> like one of those guys who goes to New Hampshire and buys, you know, a bunch of fireworks. Um, not re- I'm not super into any of that shit. I always think it's funny when people say, like, I spent, like, f- 1400 bucks on fireworks. And I'm like, I get the same enjoyment. And you I got invited to a party and then asked for money to contribute to fireworks for the party. And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't. You're going to yeah. burn them, right? I get the loudest dynamite. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I like the firecracker. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear about anybody losing fingers this year. That's a damn shame. Yeah. How about, like, my brother Phil used to tape uh, dynamite to liquor store windows? <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's I, I was at a cookout with yes, a bunch sir. of cops, and I don't know if this is true, but they were saying that they think that the reason there were less firecracker accidents is because people were buying weed instead of firecrackers this year. They think that all the firework budget has been taken up by the weed Personally, budget. I think that those two would have combined for the worst 4th of July ever, but... Uh, Do you guys go to the fireworks the and, wa- and like, watch it, like, look up at the sky and watch the fireworks, like, excited? <laughs> I mean, I'm not excited, but I'll put it to you this way. I will look into the sky and I see them, but I'm like, yeah. I, mean, I, I just, I've had enough of them. I was asleep both nights <laughs> at 9 o'clock. I didn't watch the fireworks. I didn't, I didn't go it. with my wife. I stayed home. And I, I, just didn't, I just had enough of it. So I mean, I love the celebration of our country. It's not about that. It's just, I'm, I'm all set with it. Big feel good segment here, huh? A lot of excitement. Just in this letting one. you know. What what about the NBA players and all this money that's going on? I know you're oh the best gosh. basketball player in the studio. So um uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting to play you. It seems like it seems like you didn't believe it when you We're said have that. To do a special. That'll be a big special where we show you guys play some hoops. It's gonna be special. <laughs> it's gonna need the hospital. But um <laughs> but Kyrie's gone. Yeah, I mean we all saw that coming a mile away, but uh I am. I find the NBA free agency to be the most exciting and awful thing simultaneously. Right. Like I, it's I just know like, what you mean. It's so, like it's it's a soap opera. It's a living soap opera, and I can't stand all the. What's characters. going on specifically? I don't follow sports all that. They're close. getting crazy money, like. Okay. But they just all call each other up and like, you want to be best friends and win a championship together? All right, I'll call up like my three best friends that are awesome. They about, team up and, to go on one team. And it's just like it. it I don't know, like. I, I have like to admit, it's better. exciting as fuck. Isn't it that really better? is, but the, I think I just don't like it because the Celtics aren't one of like the five destinations to go to. And if you're not one of the five destinations to go to, it's like, see you later. You're gonna be stuck in mediocrity for the rest of your life. What do you think about Kemba? I um, think I'm psyched we got him. No, I want to ask Kluski. What do you think about Kemba, the guy the Celtics just got? I, I think that they could do better. <laughs> I think that they're just kind of taking who's out there right now, Kluski's and that if good. they were just a little bit more patient and then just waiting to see how guys developed a little bit further in the offseason. They can come out with somebody that <laughs> What more position does he play? Set. The one with the hoop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Kemba? Uh, I'm psyched we got him. Uh, and I'll say this, like, I would have liked to have had Kyrie as much of a pain in the ass he is, but I'm like, this guy is, you could argue that he's just as good on the court. Uh, like, he's, he's like right there with he's Kyrie. He's a better teammate. And he's, that's the thing. He's, that's he's like right there with Kyrie, but he'll be a better teammate. What's, uh, what's the future of the Celts? Dude, it's still not that bad. They play in the Eastern Conference. I'd say there's like a one in three chance they're going to the finals next year. And then all you have to do is you, once you get there, you never know what happens. Yeah, I don't know. I'm worried about him, but what are you going to do? I'm glad, I'm glad Kyrie's gone. Can't you never that. know if that dynamic will work, too. Like three people that they're putting together a team and like being responsible for it working is like that. That might not work. Yeah, that's why I don't do it. That's why I don't jump teams. Danny Ainge is probably going to start at point guard this year. <laughs> Klusky. 
Um, Danny Ainge used to play for the Celtics. I would have put him at forward. I, whatever, you know. Who, who's Miss Monday this week? Miss Monday this week is Mary. She's a power lifter from Colorado. She's the state record holder in squats, and she's been featured in Women's Health magazine. Mary loves working out, and she loves Mondays. Miss Monday this week is brought to you by Vesuvius, located at 2 Paradise Road in Salem. Head down there for the best pizza, pasta, and sandwiches around. I like Mary. I got to tell you. Mary's good kid. I saw the picture of her. She's 50 years old. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I saw the picture of her, and I was like, oh, here's a chick like in her upper 30s that keeps it together very well. When I found out she was 50, I almost shit my pants. That's hilarious, because when I saw the picture, I can't even repeat what I thought. But it was all positive. It, like, well, that's my point. But my point is, when we were younger, 50-year-old women didn't look like that. That she's wasn't a thing. Incredible you just shape. made Mary's weak. I mean, she's watching the show tonight. She's if I saw a 50-year-old woman, woman like, like that when I was younger, it would have been like, we'd be talking about it like 20 years later. Like, when she was 70, we'd be like, remember she's that She's single, by yeah. the way. I think you two might... I'm, I can hook you guys up. I... Would you ju- would you take her out? Yes. Where would you take her for the first date? Movies? L.A. Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> you go to L.A. Fitness with her? CrossFit. We want to get embarrassed? That's a good point. <laughs> you don't want to take her there. Yeah, I, I guess I'd have to take her to my strengths. Maybe I'd take her to Vesuvius. Let's talk about go. Vesuvius Pizza. It's unbelievable tonight. It's like dynamite. I would take her to a, over there? Get her take her to a Japanese restaurant so she can squat through the entire meal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I want to I want to uh, I want to uh, Bruno her and just use her as the seat. <laughs> I'm into that. All right, let's shoot the shit here. Former Google executive ran a sex ring. He paid women to share them out for threesomes. Andy Rubin is accused of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on women. He reportedly received a $90 million severance after misconduct allegations. Uh, his wife, Rye Rubin, is trying to have a 2009 prenuptial agreement canceled so that she can get at least half of his money out of this. I, I understand this guy's made some mistakes, although he's obviously made some correct decisions if he's just banging out threesomes left and right. And getting $90 million severance packages. Exactly. He makes one mistake, and now the mistake he didn't make by getting a prenuptial agreement is null. No, we don't have those anymore? Well, don't tell me she didn't know what she was getting into with this guy. Yeah, like that's how we met her, doing some sexual weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, what did he say? Oh, I, I run an arcade. <laughs> and she was like, oh, 90 million. That seems right. People love Street Fighter. But see, she knows he's getting 90 million. Now she's trying to, she's going to hire a lawyer to try to get her Yeah, I don't cash. get to, like, to your point, though, like, I don't get how prenups just, oh, yeah, no, uh, this, this prenup doesn't count anymore. How, how is that a thing? If I have a prenup, I'll be a sweetheart. How are you going to pay for that lawyer? <laughs> I'm going. I'm going after you for four hundred of your eight hundred dollars that you have. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take half of your money. Seems like the more money some of these people have, the weirder their sexual fetishes or what they're into. Well, no, that's no. They have the same fetishes that we all do. They just have the money to make them happen. <laughs> you know, it's the middle class is the only people that doesn't get to have good sex. If I ever get five thousand dollars, you wait till you see the freakish shit I'm going to be. What able would to you do if you had fifty million sexually? Uh, missionary. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like they're trying to relive like pornos, like and just. I think I'd pay them to dress up like the hot girls in my high school. <laughs> a oh, champion so you're, sweatshirt. You're, and oh skits. god! <laughs> and, and, your they, and your high school now or back then? <laughs> <laughs> I, Loaded I, question. It's a, I'd go now for sure. Yeah, they're way better I, now. I, excuse me. I go with the the, the, youth, the youthfulness of now, but I would go with the. Uh, with the, I, I with want the, the genetically modified twenty-three-year-old. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. I want the genetically modified. You just said you like the, the fifty-year-old girl. Titties. Now you want I like girls. them all. If they're attractive, I enjoy them. Okay. I don't care how old you are. Well, excuse me, over eighteen, of course. <laughs> Sixteen in Mississippi with your parents' consent. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking moment. Boozy speedboat driver rams luxury motor yacht before waving and racing away. Timothy Kennedy, who is 39 years old, has been repeated. He's been reportedly <laughs> been arrested for the bizarre sea collision. The new Baltimore man <laughs> was like first SS filmed Minnow. circling the motor yacht like a shark, but then he steams towards it. Uh, it's a way bigger boat, and he's aiming to ram him. Let's check this out. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh, I feel like his like his Little wife is tap. in there with the guy, or like his ex-wife's in there. Or someone has his mind. There's something going on. Like, he's not just. I feel like he was trying gorgeous. to get on the boat. I, I kind of respect it a little more now. Uh, these Kennedys should stick to land. It looks like a life raft. <laughs> Are those Kennedy people? <laughs> those people? Yeah. I mean, was those people. He was a Kennedy, huh? I think that's the only time you can say those people and society jumps on board. Oh, those people. The yeah. Kennedys? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. When those Ken- people should stay on the land. When a Kennedy's in a boat, aren't they usually looking for their car? <laughs> 
I mean, he was drunk. If he was sober, would he be doing that? I think this was a case of it's not the size of the boat. It's the motion of the ocean. And this guy's ocean wasn't putting him on that boat. You're used to saying that to girls, huh? I, whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Scientists warn against creating human-monkey hybrids used to help treat diseases like Alzheimer's. That's one good reason for doing this. I can think of about 10 more, but monkeys with partly human-derived brains would be a good model for us to do experiments on to treat Alzheimer's. Chinese researchers have already created a monkey with a human brain gene. Uh, they've, they've inserted <laughs> human brain. Look at they already get this ready going, and we haven't even started on this. Research that could create smarter monkeys oh is looked God. down upon in our country. And we need gene editing experts like they have there. They have rat, mouse people, and human pig chimeras. Do you know what a chimera can do in a, in a war? They can get behind the enemy lines. Those are some oh scary God. images. We're losing the fight against the Chinese monkey brains. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm a little speechless right now. This, this is gross. Look, this might be a little if bit. I had five thousand dollars. This is what I would do. Wow, you look so nice the way you are. Why would you want to look like that? No, but I'm here's saying the I would do the monkey. Have you guys oh. seen, what's the movie that just came out? The, the Planet of the Apes? Planet of the Apes. Okay? Oh, the one that came out like 10 years ago, that one? <laughs> yeah, but t yeah, 10 years ago. And they were doing, the last time I watched the movie. They were doing genetic research on their brains to cure Alzheimer's. We, do, we are not allowing that to be done on humans, but if we tinker with monkeys, we could basically torture them, right? Is a monkey the closest thing to a human? Supposedly, that's uh, how it goes. It depends on if I get a hotel room with it or not. <laughs> I think Tonzo. I fuck the, monkeys, I think Carlo. Tonzo's the closest thing we have to a human. <laughs> I know anything you know each, with science. It just kind of drives me crazy with this stuff. Anything with science <laughs> with this drives kind of me. Stuff. Anything that's yeah. rooted in logic, I'm just not. You know. Yeah. But I, if if they were like, hey, we love. It's not to real. It's like all fake, and they try to make something out of nothing. You, you, your, the, your aunt, you love her, she's sick, she's dying, and the doctor comes over and he says, look, we can save her, but we have to mutate a monkey and torture the fucking shit out of it for five years. You're not going to say yeah to that? I don't know. I might do it I just do for it. fun. Robot puppies comfort dementia patients with its wagging tail and makes lifelike head movements. See, we're already what, helping these what, people. What, what kind of puppy? Robots. Robots? It's yeah. a Tombot, actually. It's a Los Angeles company that collaborated with the makers of puppets to design a realistic robot dog. They're currently testing the automated animal with Alzheimer's patients in Thousand Oaks, California. So they just let loose a robotic dog on these people that don't remember what happened to them five minutes before. Perfect audience. <laughs> Jenny, the test dog, resembles a yellow Labrador retriever that wags its tail, grunts, and pisses all over the rug. Just like the grandparents, it's trying to help. Do you guys want one of these things? Or I think scary? this will lift their spirits up. Yeah, but I, I just don't get why we're not using real dogs, but that is a pretty fucking cute robot. Because a real dog will poop and pee all over the place. This thing will do nothing. You just have to put batteries in it. I pre-ordered one in an I elementary mean, come school on, Donald. The whole, they come in different. The whole amounts. key is the leash. The color of the leash is the whole key to this whole thing. How do they react to peanut butter? Because I know regular dogs. How much fun would, would it be scaring your children by like putting it under water for too long and like? No, but this will help. Oh them. God, you <laughs> sick fuck! <laughs> the poor people with dementia. This will help them, make them a little happier, and lift up their spirits. Yeah, but only for three minutes because they're fucking goldfish. Then they'll at this forget point. all about Carlo, it. They don't know what the hell's going That's on. That's true. You're right about that. Yeah. Oh my God. You put him in there with a dead dog, it's the same result. Same result. <laughs> Man, I think that's what we should do. Dead dogs. Dead dogs. Let's just freeze them. And you know. at a fraction of the cost. I tell, I tell you, they, it sells itself. Mormon man is charged with extorting girls on social media trying to obtain some nudes. Gabe Ryan Gilbert, who's a 19-year-old, he's from South Jordan, Utah, he's been accused of threatening more than 50 girls on Snapchat in hopes of obtaining nude photos. This Mormon man's genius idea was to tell women that if you don't send me a naked picture of your body, I'm going to digitally create a naked picture of your body and send it to everybody. And I'm, I don't know, what percentage of these 50 girls you think fell for that? Haven't you guys got some like girls requesting stuff from you and us sending you nudes out of nowhere? Through, yeah. the, through the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Like just on your own personal Facebook or Instagram. It's, it's happened. Yeah. That's how we pick Miss Monday, right? <laughs> uh, not, not this week, that. but like this kid's 19. I mean, these girls—they're like friending any, every, anybody. Well, this is the thing—we didn't have to grow up with the internet in our lives when we were younger. Like, I mean, the, no. 
the horniness molecules that float around your brain are just magnified by the internet and we'd probably be doing something along this line people complain all you have to do now is delete the original post i have to go to the priest's house and burn the polaroids <laughs> i think there'd be a lot more peeping toms if there was no internet today i think that's fair uh, yeah that's yeah. a good point although i think that uh Did you guys have a spot? electronic video peeping right. toms is probably a lot more prevalent than you know about i bet you there's a lot more hidden camera footage of people that we don't know about that somebody on a hard drive has like 57 pictures of Carlo. Uh, I, was alleged, I mean, someone or someone. Uh, yeah. If, if only we knew people who understood video camera equipment. Or science. True. Did you have a peep in Tom? No. How about you? That's a die I shouldn't even ask you. Just the footage. Just tell we, us one story. Just the stuff from the bathroom here, but <laughs> <laughs> that camera's been cut off since the last couple you of years. You love episodes. watching Furtado go to the bathroom, huh? It's like <laughs> birthing a baby Ruth every time. I love it. <laughs> oh, God. But anyways, this kid hasn't even reached puberty yet, this 19-year-old. He's trying to get nudes from these chicks. And these He's chicks brilliant. are stupid enough to give. <laughs> he cast a net of 50. This guy didn't send it to one girl. This was, a, this was, a, this was like a... A well, that's sales. Experience. It's just, just put yourself out there. And that's the thing. This it's is his rehabilitation. Fault. We got to get this guy working for Breaking Balls. He's Genius. got 50 subscribers. Right? Well, right. here's the thing. He says that he's South Jordan, Utah. So it said that he went out. He's 19, but it doesn't say how old the women are that he's sending it to. If he's sending it to some teenage girls that are stupid enough to do this, I mean, whatever. They're young. They don't. They might not. Pro they might not but make Dawn, this decision. If I don't. But send if he's sending this to an adult, if he's sending this to like a 25-year-old woman and she sends it. You're kind of a fucking idiot. Like, like you, you're, you're, like I'm going to put myself in a vulnerable state because you, th and I'm going to give you the ammo. Like that's, you know, I'd like to know how old the victims were. Um, we'll get you their Snapchats. <laughs> Sound like a sick priest. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with comedian Marty Caproni. Yeah! Bubba Yeager here live at the IACC Book Fair tonight. We're going to interview some authors. We're going to have some feet play. We're going to look at each other deeply, longly in the eyes. What Italians do, Parmesan and mouth kissing. Come on with me, folks. Let's go do some reading. All right, I'm here with, uh, how do you pronounce my Mark Zappola, right? Zappola, yeah. Zappola, I like it. I like it, a good Portuguese. Oh, you're Italian, right? He's Italian. They wouldn't let him in if he wasn't Italian, right? 60 bucks a year, you could be Italian down here too, folks. Get it together. Mark, my friend. Talk to me, where you're from, how do you do, how you living, you're married, kids, mistresses, whatever you want to tell me, tell me, please. I'm, I'm, sing, I'm single, I'm not married. So. You hear that, boys? You know, so, I, you know, a couple of girlfriends, two, three here and there, whatever, you know. It's all two, two, three, I like it, yeah? And they make good meatball, huh? Yeah. You know? That's the key, they got to make good meatballs. Right. You know? so. so now, where'd you go to college? How'd you get into writing? Endicott College, I, I, saw, I got into writing because I lost my job, I got laid off. Shit. Yeah, the guy, the guy who, who used to train Roger Clemens asked me to write his whole life story. I said, all right. So I got How, to turn on all the Major League Baseball players. So like Balco, the whole thing, the same from, yeah, from Barry Bonds? 2008 Bonds, you name it, Roger Clemens, you know, all of them. Every, every, every guy. Where's that book? I don't see it here. It never came out. Is that an affidavit for the, for the court system? I got subpoenaed three times. The government came in. No book. Sorry. No What's your favorite subpoena? I like a nice Italian. <laughs> That's awesome. Let, let, lettuce and tomatoes, a good sofita. That's a good one. Yeah, do you, now do you go with the mayo or the oil? Now we can see how Italian you are. Ah, oil, come on. Oh, yeah, see that, folks? He's not fucking around. He writes books. What do you do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about now. What is this? this is this the critically acclaimed one? This is the big one, right? This is a, yeah, this is, well, this is, a, this is my first novel. I mean, it's a, my fourth book, I think, first novel. Everyone keeps yeah, is always asking about this one, but the last long show, man, it's, it's fiction-ish, you know, Boston crime waterfront. Talk to me more about it. What are we... This is about a kid from East Boston. Grows up, he's got a, a messed up uh, criminal family. He ends up on the waterfront, gets a job, and they, he, 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 he entrenches himself into the uh, criminal underbelly on the waterfront. It cu culminates... A real with, doxman. A real doxman. He cu culminates with a big heist uh, in the end. There's a little bit of revenge, uh, sweet revenge in there, too, so... Lufthansa. Yeah, it's... Yeah, basically, it's a little bit bigger than Lufthansa. Yeah, that was that was what four million, five million. See, I like it. At least you got the good font here. See the spacing in there, folks. You can read this in the toilet, on the plane, check-ins, TSA. You won't even t say anything. See, it's a good book. We've all been to Mystic River, you know. Now, what is it? Now, Miami Underground. Is that about the coke scene or something down there? Uh, no, it's not. It's actually about uh, this one. Is about uh, four guys uh, that uh, steal high-priced items up here in Boston. They end up in Miami, they gotta steal something out of the Versace mansion to save someone's life. 
once they steal the uh, this treasure, it, it goes absolutely haywire. Are you a member down here? Are you planning on joining? I'm going to be a member tonight. Yeah, I'm going to start tonight. One night, the one night member? <laughs> yeah, no, it's 15 bucks an hour. I'm going to start $15 and we'll go from there. We'll see what happens. You know, you're going to drink lemon cello out of your belly button. Oh, shit, I can do that. Oh, man. I can, I can no, out of my belly button. I'm sorry. <laughs> if that's what it takes, I'll do it. If we get some ice in the mixer, we'll get you right up in there. There you go. I'm ready to go. Well, Mark, my friend, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, pleasure to meet Everyone you. at home, please check out his books. He's an Italian with a brain. Look at him. Italians and all my books. Right, see, not all Italians are worried about Parmesan. Italians care about how we live. They write, they read, they drive. They're just like everyone else. Don't sell them short. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I cannot wait to read this book on the shitter. My friend... Mark, pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I hope you're you, yeah. number one right here, folks. Number one what? I said you're number one. I'm number one, yeah. No, no, number one. You might be number one, though. No, I'm, I'm not. I might be, you might be 1A, well, I'm, I'm 1B. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a couple hundred pounds on you, but, you know, your books read well. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Italians forever. Welcome, Marty. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it Thanks very much. Thanks for coming, buddy. How you doing? I'm great. Fantastic. Now that I'm here with you guys, how are you? Nice to see you, kid. You guys are uh, real, real nice. You give me free pizza and everything, which is uh, fantastic. Vesuvius. I don't want to plug your people, but uh, I'm lactose intolerant, so if at any point in this interview I get up and grab the uh, back of my pants and run out of here, it's because I got an important phone call. So, <laughs> so when did you break into the comedy scene? Jeez, uh, that's a great question. Probably 10 and a half, 11 years ago, something like that. That's it. Uh, I don't know about breaking. It was slowly trickled in. Like I got a bad prostate. And how'd you guys meet? Uh, I met Marty at um, in Faneuil Hall at Motley's. That's right, yeah. Motley's Comedy Club. How many years ago, Don? I, you know what's fucked? I, I I really can remember the night, and I'm not even bullshitting you. And I think it was June of two thousand. Thought you were gonna give me a date. No, June of two thousand. Scared. It's our anniversary. I, yeah. You know. <laughs> Actually, I think I, it was the. Uh, it was the week before 4th of July, so it would have been like the last week of June in 2010. That's creeped me out a little bit, yeah. but, uh, you know, hey. <laughs> I remember weird shit like that. It's crazy. But and we only made out. That's the weird part. Yeah, you know? it's like, like, we didn't even, no, we didn't even no, get handsy. So yeah. it's true, Don. <laughs> uh, how many shows do you do a week? Uh, I try to average about five. Is, is, is like if I'm, if I'm keeping pace uh, five shows a week, I'm, I'm pretty happy. In the summer, I just try to pay my bills, which is uh, it's the summer's tough for comedy in New England. Uh, but I tried uh, five five shows a week. Why summer slow down? Uh, oh, sounds yeah, brutal. Don will tell you. Yeah, it's like because everyone's away and, and everyone's audience. going on vacation, yep. and then everybody's like, "Oh, it's nice out. Let's go outside." Yep. And it's right, like, right. And then you try to go to like resort areas and do comedy there, but uh, when you go there, the people show up and they're all sunburned after being at the beach all day and everything. So you get like twelve sunburned people, so it's miserable. Summer, <laughs> summer makes every comedian question 50 their degrees deep, choice. just in that half yep. coma. It's so weird yeah. that it's such a happy time for the rest of the world in comedy. Like a group of the most depressed people in the entire world are like, "Yeah, it's so beautiful and sunny. Fuck this shit." You yep. know, like <laughs> it's like it's, it's just yeah, it, trivel, it shrivels up. Yeah, and the only the weird thing is if you travel to certain places, like if you go to like uh, Atlanta or like Tampa or any of those places, they still have a decent comedy. Uh, business in the summer, which is weird. Well, I think used to beautiful the, weather right, so it's not a big deal. Right, so, oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So we, you go all over? Yeah, yeah, all over the U.S. and a little bit of Canada too. So, really? uh, but yeah, yeah, trying to get out there. The last couple of years have been uh, pretty good. I the girl I open for takes me around uh, quite a bit. So cool, that's awesome. Yeah, I like it. I now, like it. how those long hours like affect your life? Whew. Uh, it's tough to balance uh, work and home stuff, you know what I mean? Like I have an elderly dad, he's 82, so you try to, uh, but you, it seems like you never have enough time for that for that stuff uh, at home. So you, you sacrifice and you have your friends and family that kind of, you hope that they help you out. And most of mine do, they pitch in, they, they help out when I need it. So I uh, try to keep me uh, from losing my mind on the <laughs> road, you know? How come all weird people are from Western Mass? 
I think it's the water. Uh, I, think, I think a long time ago something happened in Quabbin Reservoir, and uh, the people in Boston and Western Mass who drink out of Quabbin are all fucked up, and everyone else just stares at us like, uh, who are we? You are you, are, you're not from Chicopee? I am. From, all right, now you're going to. Yes, I'm from Chicopee, Mass. Yes. Okay. Home of the world's largest kielbasa, if you really How many people live in that place? Are you bragging? And or is now he's here with us. Hey, you know, I am what I eat. Uh, I don't even know. That's gay. Uh, is that near I, uh, Westfield? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's like 20 minutes from Hawaii. Did you go to Westfield State? You look like I, a Westfield State guy. I couldn't, never get, I couldn't get any colleges. Really? That, yeah. that, that's how a Westfield State guy looks, actually. It's surprising. You see, that's where your parents are connected. It's the one school they're like, ah, screw it. Put it on Westfield. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm like uh, 20 minutes from Westfield. Uh, Chicken Bee's got 56,812 people, but who's counting? Oh, so you get that many? Yeah, I mean that's just what I count on the way here. But yeah. <laughs> is that is there? <laughs> Sorry, they're all legal. Uh, no, no, not even Look close. Look at the backdrop. Not even close. This is beautiful. That is, is that very, Chicopee? This is romantic. Oh, Gorgeous. Is that Chicopee? That's Chicopee. Well, let me tell you, that's not the view that people at Chicopee see. Uh, can you pull up one from the Walmart parking lot? Can you pull up that? <laughs> like what people you, stabbing each other over cars. What do you guys do on the weekends in Chicopee? Um, what do people do, or like normal do people, do? or what do I do? What did you do, Grandma? I, like an idiot, go out and stay in a Motel 6 somewhere doing some shit show uh, in the middle of nowhere, eastern, uh, eastern New York. But uh, most people go out in the Connecticut River, and they, uh, they take their boats out in the river, or they go down to the shore, down to Rhode Island or uh, Connecticut. Um, but it's, uh, that's probably why they get a little weird, too. Connecticut River's not exactly clean. So. Are you a fisherman? Uh, yeah, I grew up on I grew up uh, on a boat in uh, Chester, Connecticut, a lot of the summer, and uh, I am. Why did you look at me like I didn't look at anything? I just <laughs> you look at me like you expect me to pull a fish stick out of my pocket or something like that. And I just guessed. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I googled you or anything like that. Yeah, well, there's not much that comes up if you Google me. Just a s <laughs> small arrest. Just a fishing. Guy. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, sad, sad, fat guy. Uh, Klusky, we have a follow up from a story a few weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks back we had run a story about someone calling the police. Because Taco Bell had run out Did of tacos. He actually called the call. Well, it looks like things got worse. In an event people are labeling the tortilla apocalypse, Taco Bell has confirmed that they are facing a shortage of wraps in their 5,600 stores. Can you believe that there's 5,600 Taco Bells? <laughs> That's They're, crazy. Think I got almost 560. <laughs> like, 5,600? That means That's there's insane. over 100 per state. Like, that's... Yeah. The 100 in Massachusetts? That's nuts. That's like Taco Bell across the what street from Taco Bell. What kind of food Taco does Taco Bell, Bell consider? We discussed this last week. Wet meat. What's it considered? Like Pre-diarrhea. Wet meat. Pre-diarrhea. <laughs> but like, is it Mexican? Sure. Well, yeah. Okay. Tex-Mex. Tex -Mex. Just, just wondering. Is it, is it really Mexican? Uh, Would a Mexican go there because Everybody that served it to no. me seemed like they were Mexican. Well, don't you go to Sparrow every now and then? Like, never. I mean, it's never. Yeah. Never I forgot Sparrow. who I was asking. <laughs> I've never been to Sparrow or whatever the hell you call the it. Taco I don't even know how to say it. You got real offended as an Italian. I just, I've just i never been there. I've never gone to Heavy? Olive Garden. Papa I mean, You ever go to Papa Gino's? Papa Gino's had like You don't nice like Olive Garden? No. They treat you like family if you give your family dysentery and diarrhea. You don't know you're from days. Chicopee. What do you know? The, <laughs> Jesus. the Taco Bell in Chicopee is right next to the Wal Martinez. It it's, it's, it's actually it's weird that you know that, but uh, apparently you guys do your research. So, so no quesadillas, no taco. They have to no take burritos. burritos and quesadillas off of the menu in some of these stores. Uh, I, I, there's something deeper here. This is based. This is a corn-based product. Like taco we have Bell's surpluses going out of, of corn in this country. Uh, here's what I think. I think that they're uh, they're just having trouble. Uh, smuggling the tortillas under the border because of the <laughs> new regulations. We have the wall now. The I don't even know. Yeah, yeah he's right. It's a, it's That's a, a really good point. They do say run for the border. So, yeah. you know, I mean. Every pound of cocaine is smuggled <laughs> in with 12 Taco Bell tortillas. That's oh, you can still get so much coke from Taco Bell. Yeah. It's real easy. Just ask for exactly. the large Mountain you Dew could, with you, no ice. You could <laughs> fold the tortilla and just snort, <laughs> use that as the straw. Mountain Dew does have the most caffeine out of any drink, correct? It's up there if it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's right there. I, mean, I thought you, guys, I thought you would know that. There. Did you say that to me because I'm a fat guy? Is that, do I look like I wake up with breakfast mountain? You look diabetic. Breakfast okay. mountain. Okay. I do. Breakfast <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, breakfast too? Yeah. It's my breakfast too. <laughs> Why doesn't Taco Bell just make, uh, cause they, they make a taco shell out of everything now. They make it out of like Cheeto dust and, and uh, chicken skin. Why don't True. they just make a taco like they out of like a mop or something like they have laying around? Yeah, the old the, That's a good idea. Yeah. Domestic yeah. materials. This is a conspiracy. I'm not get, I feel like they're not revealing the true story here. It's big taco. They're trying was, to take was, Taco Bell yeah. down. We're giving Taco, Taco Bell too much of a shine, seriously. From the taco farmers of America. <laughs> what else do we have here, Klusk? What's okay. next? The world's largest retailer sells some of the weirdest shit on the planet. But there must be market for this stuff, so we want to run a few things by, guys, in a segment we like to call Products of the Amazon. And we're going to see if you guys would use these products, all right? Okay. So the first one is for Don. 
And Don, there's nothing worse than letting your dog out in the rain to take a piss, and they come back all wet and smelling like a bologna sandwich. <laughs> Would you like this blow dryer thingy, Jiggy, for forty dollars so your dog can smell fuckable? Fuck yes. <laughs> you need- Do you have a dog? I don't, but let me tell you, if I had five thousand dollars, first forty goes to this, and then the next, you know, to the dog. To the dog. Uh, You've yeah. been talking about five thousand dollars a lot tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna get five thousand dollars. That's um, I'm putting it out to the universe. <laughs> uh, all right, I absolutely buy this thing. Like I love dogs, but when they're wet, it is kind of a bit of a pain in the ass. They stink up the house. They stink up you. Yeah, forty bucks, I can make that go away, and you know, keep Peter off my back. Forty bucks, you can give a bitch a blow. You're in. Yeah, that's, great, great. That's my that's my philosophy. The next one is from Marty. Oh, great. This uh, is another thing that the the uh, robot dogs don't have to fucking deal with. You don't have to. You have to spend the forty bucks on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper. Uh, the summer sun can cause your lips to crack and chap. Some people want their mouths to be minty fresh or lathered in vanilla, while others apparently desire the distinct flavor of something that might <laughs> sit to the side of a pastrami sandwich. For eleven dollars and ninety five cents. Would you want the dill pickle lip balm? I, I, can I ask who was touching himself when they wrote this stuff? <laughs> uh, it started out sort of gay with lathered vanilla on your lips, and then it just got progressively went through. Pitch, and then we just ended up, can you rub a pickle all over your face? All of I my, mean, all of my homoerotic this fantasies is the question. are kosher. I come all the way out here, and this is what you guys want me to it Sounds to, like that question should have yeah. been to Don. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he wants 5,000, it is, Don. Is that what you get five thousand for sure. pickle puffer? Sure. Don's a good-looking guy. He can get oh, five. You can get five. I can get he five. Gets five a grand. lot of I, I'm just saying, I've never. D- I could get five grand. What kind of pickles do you guys like? <laughs> I feel like this is just wrap. I just feel no, like I'm just saying, like I'm a dill pickle guy. All right, you're personally. trying to lure us in. You're like, I, I'm a dill pickle no. guy. Sometimes a Dominican pickle. Next thing you know, I'm over here like, I love Puerto Rican pickles. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. I, uh, is it Dominican pickles? I don't know. I meant it as a euphemism for penis, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the uh, uh, listen, uh, a dill pickle I like, a bread and butter pickle I find offensive. And it's I agree with that. Unbearable. Sub shops have some unique ability to get the best pickles. Yeah, unless I, they hit you with the bread and butter, then I want to climb over that little shield and just punch them right in the face. Like you know better than that. You got a good appetite, huh? Yeah, yeah. What are you just saying that because of your eyes? No. You can see me. I, I picked plaid so that it was slimming. <laughs> You look good. Thanks, buddy. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> You're a piece of shit. You're supposed to be my friend. Don, you ready You're for another in black, one? You pussy. Sure. Mr. Monday. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. This one's for Mr. Monday. We don't want to jump the gun. You're a man that has it all a wonderful smile, a great outlook on your own day of the week. And uh, what do you get the person who has it all? Well, you get him for $6.97, a bag of nothing. Would you buy this? Nothing for six dollars and ninety-seven cents. For what? It's, it's a nothing. gift thing. It's not. I mean, would you guys buy this? It's great for Valentine's Day. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. I'm in on it. I don't know if I'm spending six dollars and ninety-seven cents, but that has three dollars written all over for it for me. Three bucks. Okay, I get. I guess. For three, three bucks, bucks, you go. You walk in. You get the funny laugh. Ha ha. And you get to bust somebody's balls. I'm like, excuse me, break somebody's balls. Uh, <laughs> like I'm all over that. Like I'm. I'm. But at seven dollars, I'm like, you're a little pricey. Mm. For, for nothing. It's like in Spences. Like, where do you buy this? I mean, obviously Amazon, but do they sell it in Spences? I don't think you can get nothing at Spencer's. You have to go to Amazon for nothing. Okay. I want to see the nothing factory. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to. I want to see them slaving. Like you guys are getting nothing done here. I wouldn't buy this <laughs> thing for nothing. Yeah. This, no? this is for when your wife comes to you and she says, I don't want anything special. I just want something that shows you. How you feel, how much you love me. Right. And just give her nothing. Yeah. Or, or when she gets you that fake, the fake <laughs> what thing. I, what do I mean to you? Right. That's, that's a little passive aggressive. I don't know. Yeah. That's all do right. You, do you have a wife? I feel like you don't have a wife. Uh, I just wear the ring just, to pick up chicks. <laughs> okay, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> McCluskey, what does it that thing better. look like? The dome. I hope she's not watching this. Yeah. What, what's the dome <laughs> thing look like? The. Uh, oh, I was saying that these are just discontinued boggle containers. Yeah. <laughs> like if you, if you have old board games that you can't play anymore, for seven bucks, you're back in the game. It looks like there should be a ping pong ball on that thing. Yeah. I like the boggle idea. Like that was an entrepreneur that was like, "Oh, you think we just bought eight million dollars worth of boggle units and we're out and we're <laughs> fucked?" You yeah. know, it's, yeah. You know, it's weird is they have that much instructions on it. Yeah, what I mean, it's say? nothing. What else is there? Congratulations! You what got else? A box yeah. of nothing. Like, how do you screw that up? You just have a. You uh, know what I want is the email list of the assholes who bought the nothing. I'd like to know how many of those That's are sold. That's a solid out. list to have. That I mean, email like is worth something. Ark of the Covenant. Because you right could sell there. them anything, anything, which is our next product. Yeah. How, many, how, many, <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many of these are sold per year, do you think? If you had to guess. 
across the globe? Just in the world. Oh God, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's at least five digits, and it's probably six. Yeah, I was gonna say probably uh, if you factor in Europe, I'm gonna say 125,000. I have the I know I'm pulling this completely out of my It's like an impulse item that you get when you check it out. That's where they sell sell those. That's an Amazon. You're really drunk or messed up on something, and you you ever do that? You drunk? Well, I think that's what you should do. I've never used Amazon once in my life. The production costs on this. You're so Italian. You are so Italian. (laughs) I don't use the Amazon thing. I don't trust it. That's how they get you. I just never did it. I don't have time Kyle, to worry you, about Amazon. You've never used Amazon. Never. The biggest company in the world. No, no. <laughs> You're that right. stubborn. That you are a stubborn Ginzo. No. You're like, I don't <laughs> no. Marty, he might have a point. If Amazon says, I just can't Carla, be bothered. would you like Jeff me to Bezos, buy you anything? I can't You're not be, coming to my house, I you can't brick. be bothered with the easiest thing ever. <laughs> I can't be bothered. Yeah. I just, I just, I've never bought anything on Amazon. This Please. is how they get you. What do you guys buy on Amazon? Tell you, me the stuff. I, you I, I love that you're like, you want nothing? I got a guy. I got a yeah, guy that's got yeah. nothing. I don't Amazon. have to go to Amazon. All right, line Wait, the box. Like? Tell me the last thing. What you do you do on during Amazon? Amazon Prom Day? Do you just sit home and swear all day? This goddamn <laughs> country's going to shit. Another dumb holiday. I don't recognize it. What have you bought on Amazon lately, Don? <laughs> Trick that's question. not important. Yeah. That's Trick not question. important. You know what that said? That said butt this plug. Is that bad said as butt me. plug. That, no, that bad sounds as me. I probably no, but like I don't shit all over it. I realize that it serves a purpose. Like I'm not I, sh- I just said, I've never used it. I know it's great. I I go to Whole Foods and like, are you an Amazon Prime? I'm like, what the frick is that? Dude, I I just can't say yeah. Say, say yes, the- and you don't have your card, and they'll give you the discount. Like Stop and Shop. I can't wait till they get the drones. Right. When they get the drones, you're going to be out in your front lawn with your shotgun like, this goddamn thing's <laughs> coming <laughs> with it. We have a drone. We have, Breaking Balls you, has a drone. You guys yeah, have a drone? We have yeah, a drone. we do. You guys yeah. are next level down yes. here. Yeah, you guys, yeah. really. <laughs> it's going to follow Free you out Free pizza, of here. a drone. A drone's going to follow I'm you home. <laughs> Speaking of next level, the next one is for Dawn. You're known for being health conscious and always tied to the latest health fads. I'm not sure if you've ever tried cellulite therapy, but how about a nice case for your phone that highlights the scientific innovation. Is that Don's ass? It's $27. (laughs) You should have went full thong, to be honest. (laughs) And it's a cell phone case that shows off this beautiful scientific butt process. All right, so here's the thing. I'm not dealing with this problem yet, but I'm gonna buy it proactively. Because when I do, I don't want to deal with this problem, and I'll buy all your fucking no, phone don't, solutions. Don't. The proactive is the butt acne. This is for the butt cellulite. <laughs> I don't, butt acne is different. Like it's the lead. It's the lead into cellulite. Butt acne is has a productive pop. Uh, we don't want to get into the pus, but it's it's different God. than cellulite. All right. I can hear the people turning off their computer right now. <laughs> I don't understand all your science talk, but all I'm saying is this looks like it serves. It, 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 it looks like it's preying on people like myself. They'll be insecure enough to buy this, and I'm going to buy it proactively and securely. And do it. Twenty-six ninety-seven, huh? <laughs> it makes sense. As on a Amazon. Yeah, I'm not going to. On not, Amazon. Yeah, twenty-six ninety-seven. <laughs> but it's not thing? like I'm spending six ninety-seven for nothing. I'm spending twenty six ninety seven <laughs> for something. For something. Can I just say, Carlo just torched this whole segment. You're never going to be able to do it again because you already have the answer. Would you buy this on Amazon? No, no, I don't trust it. I don't trust that goddamn thing about it. I know it's easy. It delivers right to your house. <laughs> I, mean, I just. I know it's he's cheaper. He's showing us he's hip now. I know how no, it works on the computer thing. The box. I gotta try, I'll, I'll try, I gotta try it. They're not going to sponsor us ever. Are you ready? You ready for one of these? Oh, go ahead, please. Uh, these same questions. You know, you can never win a fight in a relationship, and sometimes living with somebody doesn't feel big enough for two people. If you had a little extra cash laying around, let's say a cool thirty thirty six k, would you buy this shipping container and have it dropped in your driveway to live comfortably? Thirty six k. First, I would uh, I would pay the thirty six thousand, but then I I would feel bad about evicting the illegal immigrant family that was hiding in that to come to this country. But once I did that... Why, that came from another country? Oh, it's a shipping container. It's a shipping container. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say the country, China. But anyways, uh, (laughs) here's what I will say. It's a great way to make a house in theory. But you're not going to live in that with somebody else. No, no, that's the whole thing. Does that have have heat? I mean, does it have AC? It's fully... It's it's a $36,000, like... This is like one of those, like... E- yeah, a bit of a container when the, the sun fan- hits it. Yeah. 
That thing's uh, well, like what unbelievable. What's it be like when you take a dump in the back of that thing? Everyone's going to be falling out you the door. You can't even sit in the toilet. You slip right off it. Well, it's a fifty-gallon bucket or whatever they use. I can marinate like my own drywall brand bucket for quite some time <laughs> in a storage shed. I mean, what can they really give you for thirty-six grand inside that thing? You're going to get a drywall bucket for a bath. A yellow Labrador yeah. that you can fuck. It's <laughs> yeah. I think that comes with a that. robot dog. Yeah, I thought that was a fair question. I'm surprised you guys went to commercial before I could ask it. <laughs> Mr. Monday, you ready for one? Mm-hmm. From last week's video, we know that you have issues with ingrown toenails. Okay. <laughs> Instead of going to the doctor every couple of weeks, what's your thoughts on getting this ingrown toe fixer? For only no 10 bucks, you can no do way. it yourself. No way. I love my Dr. Rotondo. I want to see that guy every five weeks. <laughs> I want him to do my feet. He's got Maybe it's six weeks. Dr. I think we should bump it to four. Dr. Rotundo. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's Italian, by the way. I hope he gives you one toe for free for that plug. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's got Kyle's got a punch card. <coughs> He's like every every twelfth toe he gets a freebie. I don't want to. You only have ten toes, Dom. Don. I don't want to. <laughs> 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 you Don's a mother and father from the same town in Italy. Uh, I. <laughs> A web feed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to. Sh- I don't want to shit on Doctor Rotundo. I'm sure he's a good guy. Great I don't guy. want him to. I don't want him to lop off one of your toes. I'm sure but a guy named Rotundo's never heard any jokes. But, but, do, you, but do, do you? Can you imagine? A year, you graduate med school with all your friends, and you go back for the 20 year reunion, and they're all like brain surgeon, plastic surgeon, but podiatrist. Just shame. Put your head down. Like that says. I bet you he can't even watch an episode of House without being like terrified. You know. You, you know who never says podiatrist. <laughs> you know who always says foot doctors. Every other doctor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like you don't recognize it. Yeah. Right? Oh, you do the foot thing? Oh, yeah. And they always mix it up with proctologists. It's just as humiliating. What's right? a taxidermist? That seems a little more. Uh... <laughs> it's an accountant. It's a fancy word for accountant. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Doc. Well done. It, well done. But there was one in Revere. It does an owl's taxes. Do you remember that? Dies. I don't. I mean, Wonderland? But here's my thing, and I've always been real about this. When I die, the idea of being put into a box, very unattractive to me. The idea of my body being burned, also very unattractive to me. I want to be stuffed, and I want to be thrown in my college basketball uniform. And I just want to be like a, I want to be like a life-size they starting lineup now. figure. Like We did a story about a kid who got set up Seriously. playing Xbox, because that's oh, how yeah, his parents that? remembered him. Dude, it's, it's not a bad solution. Especially, <laughs> especially if you if you die at a reasonable age, you still they put re- like Reese's peanut butter cups. So on you want to kind of be like a wax museum? <laughs> yes, person. I would much rather do. And you, the question will always come Ooh. to. But Don, aren't you worried some random person might fuck you? I don't care. You, you Go won't feel have it. at it. You won't feel it. Don't <laughs> do it. Bang me away. I don't yeah. care. You're, nu- you're numb down don't there anyways. You, don't you care. <laughs> don't you care about the population. There's 8 billion people in the world. This is going to be crazy. It's bad. It's not when you're just dodging. You're just dodging <laughs> dead <laughs> wax figures everywhere you drive. Yeah, it's that's what I have like, to deal with. But if I want to pay the money to be taxidermed. That's and just disturb <laughs> taxidermed is taxidermed. The verb? That's okay. the verb. If I want to pay the money to be taxidermed, there's gonna be a lot of people that'll cheap out. Not me. I'm gonna take my five grand, and I'm gonna go to the taxidermist while I'm alive. Tonzo, <laughs> we're gonna prank a taxidermist soon because that is gonna be a great uh, prank. Can we go the extra that's mile? Can we get that? We take you to the Build a Bear, and we get the little thing inside <laughs> that we push you, and then it says Don. It has Don Zolo quotes. Not for nothing, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. You know, for the life of me, I can't believe. <laughs> I'm definitely not buying that thing for ten bucks. I haven't got any seashells this <laughs> summer. <laughs> I have no seashells. I'm so far behind my seashell quota this summer. <laughs> Look at that thing, though. Look at it. Look at it. That's <laughs> the same thing auto bodies use to take out like a dent on the car. Oh, Look that's at that great. thing. <laughs> that yeah, is weird. It looks like a secret mason symbol stapled <laughs> into his foot. That, that's a that's a, a podiatrist that just charges you to take the, the top off does, of pizzas and give it to you. Does Doctor Rotondo use one of those? <laughs> no, he's a scalpel. He's not. He's using. He's that's next do you level, get a, man. Do you get any he kind of anesthetic when you have that done? No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Once well, should... in a while, it's infected. What happens is the skin <laughs> grows over it. And it like oh, it kills. Okay. Before I throw up Vesuvius all over the floor. Great pizza, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> doctor, just I wouldn't kill you to throw some mozzarella sticks next week, all right? Uh, <laughs> doc- <laughs> D- doctor Rotondo and you yes. are using second tier stuff for your feet. Th- that's obviously better, but this both you guineas $10. both you guineas don't trust Amazon. So you're $10, both eh? You're both sitting there like, I don't trust it. I'm not getting it. I, I guarantee gotta order. Dr. Rotunda uses Amazon. Is $10 no too way. cheap or too high in your brain for that? 
Yeah. That's what I wanted. To know. It's he ten dollars. Yeah, I didn't know which way he was yeah, going. It's ten, ten bucks. Do, it's ten dollars too high or too low though. Too like, low. The tools he's using on my uh, feet are big money. A scalpel. He's a scalpel. A scalpel. A scalpel. Big money. He's using <laughs> serious shit on Mr. Monday's feet. You guys are all right. Excuse me, but I grab these. Serious you guys should shit. see how good my feet look. I'm not going to show I, you. I'm a I foot model. I'm a here. foot model for Christ's sakes. That's got to be a pretty gross brochure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they're ingrown every six weeks, that's got to look like he's Freddy Krueger with a foot model. He's mod a model for ingrown just toes. His scars and blood. Oh, God. He's a model for podiatrists yeah. before. That's worse Taxidermist. than him and his butt pus that he said, and everyone was like, Bruh. butt pus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back with more from Marty and Zolo. See you in a few. Yeah! Analytic Wealth Advisors is a firm specializing in financial planning, insurance, and retirement income. Setting up your future can be tough, but Analytic Wealth is here to simplify the process, taking you from before and through retirement with clarity and focus. Time to feel confident about your future. So I heard in Chicopee you have a place <laughs> called Loft Comedy. I do, yeah. Uh, so I'm on the road probably, whatever, 30 to 40 weeks uh, a year. But uh, back home, there was no place to really um, consistently get up and get stage time. There's a bunch of new comics. So we started a comedy club called, called Loft Comedy Club in Chicopee, 92 View Street. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you guys are magic. The logo's right behind. First, I had a dirty foot, and right to my logo. But, uh, yeah. So we have a, com a comedy club there. It's, uh, it's great. Loft Comedy Club. It's, uh, it's fantastic. So I appreciate that. So That's you really started nice. that yourself? Yeah, I started. Well, not, I shouldn't say with myself. I started one before uh, for, for years and years. And then uh, my, my buddy, uh, Jeremy Goff, is a very, very funny comedian. He's the house comic there. Uh, so myself, Jeremy, and uh, Ed Noons, who's... Uh, um, the proprietor of the actual building, the three of us have it together. So it's so a little less. You get sport. some big acts, like does Don show up? Um, you know, Don's too good for us. Uh, we've been going back and forth with yeah. the rider. Don wants a robot dog and <laughs> something to do with a toenail. I don't know. Um, yeah, we had uh, Gilbert Godfrey a couple weeks ago. Um, Shit, we've huh? had Dan Soder. We've had uh, some, some real good guys coming through. And uh, hopefully uh, this fall, we're about to announce our schedule. When we do that, it'll be uh, pretty good. Pretty That's good. awesome. Yeah. How many yeah. people can it hold? Well, we got an upstairs and a downstairs. The downstairs room, we could probably do whatever. I think it's like 250, something like that. Upstairs, we do about 140, something like that. Wow. So it's uh, it's good. It's great for comedy. It's intimate and uh, and fun. That's cool. So how many days a week are you there? Well, here's the thing. I, it's only if I'm in town. But Jeremy's right. there almost all the time. He's the house comedian. So he's there uh, most of the weekends and everything. Um, I, if I'm in town or whatever, I'll, I'll stop in. I'll, I'll abuse my privilege a little bit, jump up and do, uh, you know, 10 minutes or whatever and have some fun. So it sounds like you could loan Donnie that five grand. He's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don's going to have to earn it. Once and I get that uh, five grand, I'm going to become unstoppable. Okay? Once I get five grand. <laughs> Don's going to have to earn it with some pickle lip balm all over his face. So I heard you opened up nationally for this, Sorry. this uh, female comedian. Uh, Jesse Jesse Peluso. Yes, you open up so for her? You, you were so Italian. You're like, this female, this female. comedian, whatever the Kyle, girls. What are the girls? I, I yeah. got to tell you this much. Even I noticed that one. I was yeah. like, why did you put female? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, really? Yeah. Like, I was like, if yeah, you want. They're just regular comedians. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but they're better than men. Well, listen, uh, she's fantastic. She's one of the pretty. best comedians in the world. She's, uh, yeah, she's like, she, she's like a sister to me. So all my friends are always like, yeah, she's hot. And I'm like, Oh, so right, I can't say anything No, you can say whatever you want. I know you're Italian. You can't help it. <laughs> the same way I know you owned at least one IROC in your life, I know you can't help. I stole an IROC. <laughs> yeah. That's even more Italian. <laughs> yeah. Did you grow up in Revere? I'm just guessing. Um, yeah, she, she's, uh, she's fantastic. Uh, she's uh, one of the, one of the uh, best comedians out there. Um, we met probably six, seven years ago and I've uh, been working together ever since. We met before she experienced any level of notoriety and then she blew up on MTV with uh, MTV Girl Code and now she's on Joe Rogan's podcast and all this stuff and everything, so she's been doing uh, fantastic. So how'd you get the gig with her? We just, uh, we did a show in a dirty little bar in the Berkshires. I shouldn't say dirty, but I kind of should because the owner <laughs> heckled us. So they hired us and then the owner, who was from England, just heckled us the entire show. They don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> no, he was, his name was Biff too. So like when you're getting bullied by a guy named Biff, you're like, this is way too back to, my name's Marty, so I'm like, this is too oh back to Oh my God, this is wow. Yeah, it's weird. That's like. Yeah, so we, we, needless to say, the gig was very memorable and uh, we kept in touch and the next year we did another run of shows together. Did a nuclear then, physicist she, try to fuck you? Uh, you stupid asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you came to my bar. No, but these Iranian terror. All right. Uh, yeah. No. The uh, yeah. So it was. Uh, we became friends, and then we stayed in touch. And when she blew up, she was nice enough to come back and uh, take me along with her. So it's it's been a fun ride. Hey, good luck to her. Yeah, she's thanks. Italian too. 
She is super, her name in Italian, she will say this, means many hairs. So, <laughs> so she don't shave much. No, no, she, yeah. I, I think it's the converse. I think she literally uh, sleeps in a bath in there. Um, <laughs> my, my name means uh, Billy Goat, just uh, for Crony. reference. Yeah. 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 It's weird. Who do we get like, I love that you right knew that. that. My last name's Caponegro. What's that mean? <laughs> I'm not touching with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> I am. Because it's. Nope. Nope. It means well, black, means of black of hair. Black hair? Yeah, Cap Negro. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to jump in here and move Yeah, it'd be great. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, it's yes. good. Right in. Woo! We love doing the show. But what we love doing more than the show is just like reaching out and touching our fans. And sometimes our fans <laughs> reach out and touch us by sending in their mail. And this segment is called Jail Mail because all of our fans in this one are criminals. All right. Yeah. This yeah. Are you guys ready sometimes to sift through scary. some mail? Is this ma male or female? Uh, it's female male. Oh, Which good. today, like you, that, that doesn't really answer the question, but you, the pictures will help. Look okay. at you. Thank you. She Mr. Fair, Monday, huh? the first lovely ladies facing 6 to 12 months for shoplifting. It was an item over $600. And she says she loves the Miss Mondays. She's going to eventually get out, and she wants to know if she could squish her little titties into one of your Monday oh shirts. Oh, my God. <laughs> that got so aggressive so fast. <laughs> Holy jeez. So she loves the Miss Monday? <laughs> what? What just happened? It was so professional. It was so professional. It was like, it was like, it was like the guy Chuck from the dating game had a stroke in the middle and just said whatever he was thinking. Holy oh. shit. What do you say it again? I, I, yeah. I, 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 Can you repeat I, that question? Do the whole lead in, too. Do the whole lead in. I'm confused. Oh. I'm confused. Oh, my God. It went from professional to, to phone sex. Little it was like crazy. <laughs> the first lovely ladies, she's serving six to 12 months because she shoplifted an item over $600. She says that she loves the Miss Mondays that we have here, and she wants to know if Carla could send out a T-shirt or a bandana she could jam her big fat titties in so that she could be the next Miss Monday. First of all, <laughs> Steph kind of looks... She kind of looks like Jules V. You know Jules uh, who follows the show? And she's been to some of our functions. She's a sweetheart. They kind of look alike. Don't you say so, Donnie? Don't you think her... <laughs> Don't you think her and Jules look like a She reminds me of the girl from Jessica Jones. Did anybody see And Jules is very Jones? pretty, too. I just want to know, uh, the first time around, I think you said uh, little titties. Yeah, and then, then the you next said time fat. You said fat titties. Yeah, he's, he's um, got an imagination. He's such type. a fraud. Is there anywhere in the in the fact check department here? The, um, the can little Steph write a letter in the with The picture's cut off at the neck, so I kind of had to just <laughs> fill in the blank. Well, on, honestly, um, yeah, we'll send her whatever she wants. Uh, okay. I mean, look at her. Yeah. Look, her eyebrows are perfect. She's great. When she, she gets some pretty girl. dimples. <laughs> Pretty girl, you get a job. You what do you think though? she stole? Six hundred dollars. That's a big shoplifting thing. What do you? What can you carry out that costs six hundred dollars? Makeup. Sixty nothings. And by sixty, <laughs> I mean way off on the math. Probably one hundred twenty. Like, probably like ninety-eight nothings. One hundred twenty. Case of champagne and a bag of sex toys. But that's actually, just, just if I'm she thinking. really wants something, she has to send a picture of her from the neck down. Oh. Tonzo wants to see what she looks like. All right. Probably a lot of stab wounds. He's hoping she's full body because that's what he's into. Probably a lot of stab wounds and prison tattoos. Anatomically <laughs> correct, Steph. Zolo, the next letter is from Lulu. She poured hot grease on a coworker back in 2017. She's looking at five <laughs> to seven years for that. Jesus. That's attempted manslaughter. What a winky. She says she's a big fan of Bubba Yaga because she likes a man with something to hold on to. She wants to know if we can set her up uh, with him when she gets out. Would you be able to hook that up? If she's pouring hot grease on dudes, I'm into it. So she's probably, a Bruins fan. I'm probably keeping this one for myself. I'm going to be honest with you. You're a little svelte. She likes something to hold on to, she says. She likes grabbing that cushion. Yeah, because she can't see too good. Stop looking at me, guys. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like an emoji. <laughs> she, just, she has custom made Boston Bruin eyelashes. I didn't even notice that. I didn't know what you, you meant when you said Bruin. You didn't like, know it? How do you not know? No, I, 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 I didn't like, notice the black and gold specifically that it was you, black and gold. I know. All right, please. You, you can fucking notice. rip into me. Oh my I didn't God. make the, excuse me. I didn't make the connection with the that's where you're going. Do you with like the girls Bruins. with short hair? <laughs> <laughs> I like them a little shorter than that. How come I don't want to be surprised? Really? Yeah, not that, not <laughs> that not that long. On the list of qualifiers for a girl, that's where that's where yeah. you were like, let's start at the short hair. <laughs> what would Forget you the mean? fact that she's in prison. Has you one know eye that there's some guy that's turned her down at some point and you've been like, yeah, sorry, I just don't. What's want What's one hair word checks. to describe her hair that you guys would use? Oh, her hair or yeah, her hair? Her hair. hair. Beetleful. Rusty Brillo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. Wow. I would say her hair looks like uh, eyelashes. 
<laughs> if you just really look at it, just, it yeah. looks like a looks like a disheveled eyelash. Poor thing. Yeah. I feel like the right side of her face wakes up two minutes before the left side of her face. <laughs> <laughs> she I'm awake the room. She's smelling burnt toast right now in that picture. You can tell. <laughs> Marty, this next one oh. is uh, it's a gentleman named Charles. He's currently <laughs> facing seven to ten years for trying to suffocate a kid with a deflated soccer ball. He's a, a, a fellow Western mask guy, of course, and he said that <laughs> Thanks, he course. saw your act when he was out there. He wants to know if there's any chance you could maybe do a prison tour so he could see you. Well, listen, uh, yes, Charles, I will date you, but uh, <laughs> I'd also like to shout out the World Cup winning uh, U.S. Uh, women's soccer team. Yes. I mean, I'll never look at a soccer ball the same way again, but uh, hey, you know. Uh, yeah, he looks like he's from Western Mass, so I believe that part, but this is why I'm suspicious of the rest of this. I don't know if that guy can write. Uh, <laughs> His roommate can. Yeah. I mean, either that or he writes prolifically because he's on meth. You know what I mean? His <laughs> was his letter 973 pages? We, he yeah, might I, be the flip I, of it. He might be the guy that just picks up a pen and never stops writing. Like he, he looks like one of the Rolling thing. Stones. I just, when you get arrested, don't you try to look normal because you know that people are going to see the mugshot? That guy's nah, I kind of like, nah. respect going in crazy on the mugshot. I think you have two routes you can go. You can be like, yeah, it's fucking on and I'm going crazy. Or you make yourself look pretty. Or you make yourself feel the emotion of your arrest. You have three routes. I, I originally started right. with two, and the third one came to me. I just realized that he also lives near my house, so I think the guy looks great. I don't yeah. know what you guys are talking about. I think he's a, how long is he in jail for? I'm just asking. Uh, just a point of issue. Uh, he's frequent your club. He's got Suff serving Suffocating life. a kid with a soccer ball? Yeah, that ain't yeah. cool. All right, yeah, he's a little, uh, he doesn't look great. He was out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo. Oh, Red yes. flag. Red yes. card. Vanessa. Is the next one, and she is awaiting trial after stabbing her boyfriend earlier this year with her stiletto because he said he didn't like Mondays. This woman is dedicated to your cause, all right? She sure is. She found our show by Google searching Mondays. She had never heard of the concept of a Monday before that. And when she found us, <laughs> she wanted some gear. Another little, another chick that wants, I'm not going to get into what she's going to put inside the t-shirt, but would you guess, would you send her one? Did she stab her boyfriend with a stiletto shoe or a stiletto knife? That's what I want to know. I didn't know there was a stiletto knife. Also, also, just for a very you Italian know, question. Yeah, it, yeah. You know what a stiletto knife is? I know what a stiletto knife is. Do you guys know what a stiletto knife is? That's where they probably named the shoe. What the hell's wrong with these guys? I thought like I was the idiot here. No, it's a stiletto. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a switchblade, but more convenient. Go straight up. Boom. It's like a, it's like a. So it's a stiletto knife or a shoe. Would you hide things in Vanessa's prison wallet? <laughs> in her prison, her prison wallet? She has a lot of room in her wallet. That's what I'm hearing. What kind of contraband would you. Put in a condom and sneak inside of Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> a hot dog. All right. Um, <laughs> Jeez. I would definitely give her some gear. And she look at she stabbed if, her boyfriend if Vanessa, for the cause. If we needed to get sixty Taco Bell tacos across the border from Mexico, how many <laughs> could we put inside <laughs> Vanessa and Theodore and Rudy? It depends what time of the night it is. You know. How'd you go Luba up in the middle of that? He says Vanessa. Oh, wow. I like Vanessa, and I yeah. want her to be Miss Monday of the week one week. It'd be really nice when you get out of the can. We will send her a T-shirt. It's about redemption. Yep. No, we'll take care of her. It really. I mean, she's you got think she gets it in the can? In the can? Oh wow! I think that's what I was implying the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Solo, you ready for the next one? Love it. Let's do it. Matt Love was arrested after taking a nap at the house he broke into. <laughs> He sent a letter because he's a huge fan of your segment, I'm Offended. Obviously. Taking Jesus. a look at Mac and hearing his, Matt and hearing his story, he wants to know what about him offends you. i got to be honest with you. Nothing offends me with his look, but I feel like he's culturally appropriating from both the Quakers and the Hare Krishnas simultaneously. And if I had to be offended by something, it would be his miscultural appropriation. Does he have a fake eye? Look at his eyes. One eye is like twice the size of the other one. You guys are missing it. You know what the big thing is? He's not even watching right now, but he can hear us. Look at the size <laughs> of that goddamn ear. Yeah, that that's a good point. Giant. I missed those the entire time. Cauliflower. Yeah. He must have been a wrestler. <laughs> With a <laughs> triangle of acne on his forehead. <laughs> look, 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 look at, at his left eye and look at his right eye. Oh, you got a point. They're up and down. I see yeah. that. I see what you're talking Lefty about. Lefty, righty. Yeah. The most offensive thing is falling asleep while robbing the house. That's got to be the most offensive part. Was he robbing it or was he just drunk and like passed He broke out? into it. And I mean, this guy's, what was he, fucking praying to the fucking whatever with that thing? What, Youth what, is what, so imagine walking today. in and finding that guy. What religion can up? I offend? This Who wants to claim this asshole? And uh, back in the uh, late 90s and uh, the second tier loge at Yankee Stadium, I got in a fight with seven Hasidic Orthodox Jew kids. And I'm just saying that he looks like one of them. 
So maybe he went. Maybe he went wrong. Maybe he. Uh, maybe he turned wrong. Did they ever get awkward because they I said because they said the word Jew? Is that why? No. No. Did they I brought Brian. He's Jewish. All right. I mean, we, yeah, were, we were just trying to picture what that it, really happened. An acid. Yeah, hundred percent. An acid one. That's yeah, a great would story. Like. I mean, wow. I don't know if I want to tell it. Can now. you tell us a little bit about it without saying the word J E W? Uh, no, no. But I wasn't saying it like. Oh, geez, <laughs> see, that's, really? you that, make that, me that, see that's like that. This guy's talking about putting stuff in a prison wall and everything else. Yeah. I get to turn around. And I want to hear about what happened at the fight at the. Okay, I was at, well. You know, the cl the closer you sit to the field, the old Yankee Stadium, the more baseball fans you have. You're a in the first couple of rows. Yeah, but the first couple of rows, you want to talk baseball, they're good, right? But when you start getting farther away, the cheaper the seats, the more likely you're going to fight. So my buddy shows up, tells me we have good seats. Next thing I know, we're in the second tier. I'm already getting ready to knuckle up. Poppy hits a home run. I mistakenly go, yeah, and they all turn around. Next thing you know, it's a blah, blah, blah. I said something about slapping the curls off his face. Next thing you know, there's just fists flying over. So it was them. one against seven? Uh, well, my three buddies watched, so I don't know what that I hope they're not your buddies anymore. Uh, two of them are, one of them isn't. But uh, i got to be honest, and, uh, from their standpoint, it was hilarious. Uh, you had seven Hasidic Jews yeah. trying to assault you. Well, I was only really you. fighting two, and the other five were uh, formulating a lawsuit. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, 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 <laughs> well, it's been a great career, you guys. Yeah. You know, I've, had a, I've had a good run here in this Let's comedy Let's offend thing. one more person, all yeah. right? The last one's for Marty. Yeah, the oh. stadium's crazy. This self-proclaimed number one Patriots fan got arrested for trying to break into Belichick's house, and he told cops that he was doing it because Bill wanted him to work on the coaching staff. He said he watches the Monday show religiously. He wants a job at Breaking Balls, and he put you as a reference. Are you vouching for this man? <laughs> oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Look, first of all, you should. Ha he could be a coach. I mean, look at that level of commitment. He does look like a football coach. That is a lifetime commitment, right? He's not getting – he's not – no one's drafting it. No one's trading for that guy. He's, he's a Pats fan for life. He's there. <laughs> And, f and quite frankly, if you use me as a reference, I think you guys should hire him and maybe make him the director of HR here. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably get your name tattooed in his forehead. He's going to, the only guy, see how it says Riddell across that's, the thing That's though? incredible. Yeah, we were talking about that. Is I, that Roger? Is that Roger Riddell? No. Oh. God, that's, Godger. That, that's how he is in China. Roger Riddell. Riddell. Go, Godger Riddell. <laughs> uh, so many letters for him. So many letters. Uh, so many. Uh, yeah, this isn't the type of, like, this isn't an NBA fan, because NBA fan, like, the you, you jump free agency. Well, they don't have helmets in the, teams. In the NBA. This, Dickie. <laughs> this, this guy's, he's committed. He's in. Hey, so um, this is kind of like your level of <laughs> when if you die, you're going to be putting basketball shorts for display forever. Like, that's that level you're of be commitment. In basketball shorts. Yeah, he I'm said he wants my, to be. I'm going to. Do you really bold. want? To, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I do. Did you write your will yet? I've never written a will. You can do a video one right now. Who would you give your will to? You can do a video one right now. Let's talk about who you give your will to because you can't give it to your parents because unfortunately they'll probably be deceased. Can I ask you one question before we start? When the basketball shorts, are they stuffing you flaccid or semi? Or that was a big. Are you wearing Larry night? Bird shorts? You know what I'd ideally like? I'd ideally like a three-quarter husky. A good hang day. Something so that I'm not like, <laughs> look, hey, look at this guy. He's showing up. No, just something like people, people write about it, trying to figure it out. People walk by and they, like they just kind of like, wow, that, you know, it looks pretty good. But it must like, have been hard for him to dunk. Yeah. Enough <laughs> like when the pizza delivery guy's like, look at that guy. That's what you want. That's that? that's okay, what I was. Yeah. Really, okay. Good. That's what my dick's going. Who are you giving your will to? All right. Right now, I'm going to tell you. My entire baseball card collection, including both Ken Griffey Jr. upper deck rookie cards, that can go to my brother. And this will be my living will, and I would like to be turned into a starting lineup figure with the taxidermist. So that's what I, I want. I smell a new segment, living will. I like it. I think we need to be doing like living it. will. I like that. I'm, prou I'm really proud of you. And uh, if, he, if he wants to pick up the payments on the new Acura, he can. But there's a lot of payments, so I don't know if I want to leave that or if we just let the bank take it. Let the bank take it. All right. I'm proud of you like I was at the Pride Parade. <laughs> so, listen, so listen, so listen, guys, shows. another great Monday night show in the books. W Had a where, blast. where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me. Uh, I'm branded across everything. It's Marty, M-A-R-T-Y, Caproni, Cap Like Baseball Cap, Roni Like Rice -a Roni. Um, I'm in uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. If you if you add me on Facebook, just make sure you mention that you saw me here, so I know you're not some creepy dude. And what do you got for the only cre the only creepy dude here is Klosky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wick, what do you got for shows coming up? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Saturday, you can catch me in Connecticut. I'm at a place called Carter Hill Farm with uh, Jiggy, Mark Jagarian from uh, Practical mm -hmm. Jokers. Uh, I'll be there with him. And then um, 
I'm, this Wednesday, I'll be out on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, if you're uh, out in the vineyard for any reason, as you guys, robot, rabbit, or whatever Rub you guys it. say. Robot. Yeah. Robot. Uh, so if you are on your robot and you're out on the vineyard, uh, I will be out uh, on the vineyard doing a comedy show there. Uh, it's above the bowling alley. I forget the name of it, but uh, it's I with Harmon Marino Productions. It's great. I know what that is. And then uh, the big one I always like to uh, plug, too, because it means something to me, is uh, September 20th, I'm at Bridge Street Live Theater in Canton, Connecticut. And... Uh, that's going to be a special one. So, if headline in a theater show is uh, uh, kind of big for me. So beautiful. Yeah. What do you get for Zolo? Oh no, I just I had a, I, had a, I wanted to pitch my own thing too. What do you, go ahead. Pitch Tomorrow it, night, maybe. Cambridge Comedy Underground. If you can't get out of your house to come see it, you can go on Facebook and watch me live. Beautiful. Yep. Hey, let's give it up for Marty right now, guys. Yeah. Good job. Great job. Thanks, buddy. Great Thank job. Thanks for having me. Remember, Monday only comes four times a month, so you got to make the best of it. Monday on three. One, two, three. Monday. Monday!